and everybody knows that the EU, who for seven months of the most proportionately destructive war in history have failed to condemn and sanction Israel, have immediately and unanimously condemned and sanctioned Iran for a disciplined retaliation which killed nobody. The world is changing. Your settler colonial project has been exposed like never before, and the world can see that the EU emperor has no clothes. When we talk about EU enlargement, including Ukrainian accession, the people of Europe, and especially Ireland, should be aware of exactly what it will mean. The cost of Ukrainian accession will be monumental. It will cost trillions to rebuild Ukraine, not the 50 billion. That's before we talk about the actual cost of enlargement. Ukraine and Moldova are three times poorer than Bulgaria, which is the EU's current most disadvantaged member. CAP will not exist as we now know it. The European Council estimates a 20% cut in CAP payments to existing member states will be needed to allow for Ukrainian accession. In its communication on pre-enlargement reforms and policy reviews last month, the Commission again stated that further enlargement of the EU would require the end of unanimity voting. The Commission specifically said that qualified majority voting should be extended to taxation and foreign policy. This would have a profound impact on Ireland. It would put Ireland at the mercy of other larger member states and their hawkish foreign policy. It would be the debt of Irish neutrality. We need to think about where we're going. Thank you, President. So the rules-based order is in roaring form. Two weeks ago, Israel bombs Iran's embassy in Syria, an act of aggression against two states, the UN Charter and the Vienna Conventions. Rules, not only no condemnation, but defence of Israel against retaliation. So last week, Ecuador follows suit, sends armed heavies into Mexico's embassy, snatching an asylum claimant, an assault on refugee and diplomatic law. Of course, the US has never respected international law. It was always one law for their friends and another for everybody else. But after six Six months of throwing international law on the bonfire in Gaza, something is broken. We are in free fall. Strikes on hospitals normalised. On aid convoys, refugees, civilians normalised. Famine as a weapon of war normalised, all with impunity. We are witnessing the collapse of the post-war system instigated by the US and Europe, all to shield Israel, our outpost from con consequences. But when the last law is down and the devil turns on us, where will we hide all laws being flouted? Last night, we hosted a packed event in the Parliament where the UN Special Rapporteur Francesca Albanese represented our UN report, Anatomy of a Genocide, a report that everybody should read. Analyzing Israel's patterns of violence since the 8th of October, Albanese concludes the threshold indicating Israel's commission of genocide have been met. That Israel has committed three acts of genocide with the requisite intent, killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, and deliberately inflicted on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. Israel is guilty of genocide, the crime of crimes, because we have afforded them impunity for their crimes against the Palestinians for 76 years. Words are not enough. We need arms embargoes. We need the association agreement suspended. The concept of international law is meaningless in the mouths of EU leaders as long as they refuse to apply it or hold Israel accountable for genocide and all those who have helped to facilitate it. It has to be said, the EU has some neck lecturing Georgia on rule of law when we're sending weapons into a genocide and German police are cracking down on civil society like 1930s Nazi Germany. Transparency International have called for sanctions against Georgia to defend democracy. They couldn't care less about Georgian democracy. They care about the money to get paid to interfere in it. Through NGOs, the EU and US use their wealth to set up parallel publics in non-EU countries like Georgia. These influential, yet unelected NGO representatives have access to resources and politicians in Brussels and Washington. The whole sway in institutions effectively spread propaganda and police the terms of debate. 
They stir up protest and destabilisation in order to forward the strategic aims of their foreign paymasters. The foreign agents' law is flawed, but if it's enacted, it will be a result of anti-democratic EU and US meddling in Georgia. You have pushed too hard for too long. Grazie, Presidente. So here we go again, giving out about foreign interference in Georgia while brazenly interfering ourselves. We never talk about the reality of life in a country where almost a quarter of the population lives abroad, driven out by abject poverty and non-existent labour rights. The median wage in Georgia is about 360 euros a month. Emigration is the main thing Georgians expect from EU membership. They're not starry-eyed believers in our values. They've much bigger problems to worry about. And while the EU zealously runs the rule of law over every aspect of Georgian law and society to see if it measures up to our values, it does absolutely nothing to improve wages or conditions in Georgia. You couldn't care less about them. Georgia's NGO class is absolutely maximalist when it comes to liberal reforms, but like the EU, is meekly minimalist when it comes to the building blocks of a decent life. Workers' rights, minimum wages, social security. That's what happens when your grassroots movement is led from the top and powered by grant money. You'd see deeper roots and an astral turf pitch. Would we stop interfering and allow the Georgians to stead up their own future? What has been seen cannot be unseen. And the world can now see exactly what European values really are. 200 days of Israel systematically wiping Gaza from the earth, 505 bombs a day, 21 an hour, doctors executed, mass graves in hospitals, journalists murdered. And all the while with not just the silence, but the active complicity of the European Union. The European Union who flew the flag of the oppressor from day one whose countries axed the funding to a starving Palestinian population despite any evidence of any wrongdoing from anyone against UNRWA, who increased the flow of weapons to Israel tenfold since they started a genocide, weapons to slaughter Palestinians. So keep your hand wringing and your crocodile tears. It couldn't have happened without your complicity. It's continuing now because of it. European values, same as it always was. Murder and colonialists, you'll never be forgotten. Over six months and more than 100,000 casualties in Gaza. And now you want to talk about an EU response. The EU response is to funnel weapons to the genocidal apartheid regime, provide diplomatic cover for their crimes. While and cry crocodile tears for the massacred children while defending an occupying power's non-existent right to attack the people of the land they occupy. With Russia, you all remembered how to apply international law and more. It extended to Russian novelists, dog shows, any sport you can imagine. But as Israel murders more children than in any global conflict in all of it in the last five years, you couldn't even muster one sanction. This is the EU's Madeleine Albright moment. Is the slaughter of tens of thousands of children a price worth paying to maintain EU interests? It looks like the answer is yes. Sadly, settler colonialism, apartheid and genocide are integral to the order that built and sustains the EU. Uh, thank you, President. So now we've had people in here demanding the unilateral seizure of Russian state assets to give to Ukraine when every single piece of legal advice, internal and external, has said don't go there. It's state piracy, it's against international law, it will only invite retaliation, it's against the rule of law that you constantly say ye stand by. But like everything else, the US, fresh from its banditry of their 7 billion euro heist of Afghan assets, has passed a law to take Russian ones and the EU wants to blindly follow suit. Now I know the High Representative talks about a somersault where we'll just take the interest, we won't take the assets. Again, theft, uh, which will be a massive own goal. And on top of that, you want the money not for Ukraine's reconstruction, for its, but for its victory. There is no victory on the battlefield. Only 10% of Europeans believe that now. What's needed is a ceasefire and negotiations, and every day we prolong it wrecks Ukraine further. It will only contribute 
to further lawlessness and a complete breakdown of multilateralism. Perhaps that's the point. It looks like the US would rather burn the world to the ground than see the end of their dominance over it. Even the IMF and Christian Lagarde have warned that the US-backed proposals to use the frozen assets to finance the war risk breaking international law. You say that you're, not taking the you're only taking the revenue and you're not taking the capital of the assets. But this recklessness will open the Pandora's box and just like the sanctions could easily rebound on the EU. And this recklessness will undermine your own Western capitalist financial system. Now hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers are dead. Russia is gaining territory against a demoralized and exhausted aging army of conscripts. More reports are coming out detailing how close we were to a peace deal in April 2022. Why are we still pushing for war? How many more Ukrainians must be sacrificed in this stupid, avoidable war? This place struggles to utter the truth about who bombed who first. Israel bombed Iran first. But this place has an imperialist worldview. How did ye come to hate the people of the Middle East so much that ye tried to exclude them from the realm of international law? Over the past five years, EU countries have been complicit through arms sales and direct military involvement in the war against Yemen that killed 400,000 people, the genocide in Gaza that's killed or maimed over 100,000 Palestinians in just six months, and in the sanctions against Syria and Iran that killed tens of thousands through preventable deaths every year. We have endless debates here about human rights, but these people you vote to crush are not afforded human rights. Ye pretend the EU is civilized, in your suits, you condemn people to die with your voting cards, blatantly lying to excuse your actions. The banality of evil. This place is a stain on humanity. Mr. Burrell, we respect your effort to bring some sanity to the place. I have to say, of all of the insane discussions that we've had in here, this one absolutely has to take the biscuit. Iran's unprecedented attack on Israel. As if Iran woke up one day and decided to strike Israel out of the blue. As if Israel's targeted attack on the Iranian embassy in Syria, which killed 16 people, a flagrant violation of the Vienna Convention, had never happened. Everybody outside this room knows the cause of the escalation is Israel. Everybody knows that Israel has been trying to broaden the conflict in the region to detract from their genocidal war on Gaza. And everybody knows that the EU, who for seven months of the most proportionally destructive war in history, have failed to condemn and sanction Israel, have immediately and unanimously condemned and sanctioned Iran for a disciplined retaliation which killed nobody. The world is changing. Your settler colonial project has been exposed like never before. And the world can see that the EU emperor has no clothes. Last October, Commission President von der Leyen told us Israel has a right to self-defence in line with international law. That's not true. Occupying powers have no right to attack those who resist occupation. Also a fiction is the notion that von der Leyen, the EU or the US give a damn about international law. Israel bombed an embassy in a third country and the Brits and the US and France, they blocked condemnation of this crime at the UN Security Council. Von der Leyen gave diplomatic cover for Israel's genocide in Gaza, while the US, Britain, Germany and France provide the arms, logistics and support for the crime of crimes. European powers are still perpetrating genocide in the 21st century. The mask is gone. All the propaganda about civilization, international law and EU values, it's all been exposed. The EU has now decided it is going to be is there going to be accountability for those who have facilitated genocide? Or will the EU be seen as a defender of the law of the jungle? As the present mandate draws to an end, we leave this continent poorer than it was five years ago, with record inequality, a worsening housing and cost of living crisis. A Europe taking a sledgehammer to solemn and necessary climate promises. A Europe which has lost the ear of a changing world. A Europe stealing from every single pocket to barrel down the road of ever-increasing war and militarisation. A Europe setting fire to international law so that you can support Israeli genocide. My God, how did we get to this point? And where will we be if we have another five years of it? Well, I'll tell you something. 
The people of Europe can't afford to find that out. The parties of business as usual have lost their mandate. Change must come. And in June, in every country, people have an opportunity to vote for peace and a socially just Europe. It's more important than ever that they take it.